Do you know about ILS cats? Nope, not that cat. These. These ILS categories determine whether you're allowed to land and how you land. Auto land, manual landing, or even diverting, it all comes down to whether the airport, the aircraft, and you are certified for the right category. In the next few minutes, you'll finally understand Cat 1, Cat 2, and Cat 3, when they're used, what they mean, and even how to choose the correct category on your virtual flights. Before we dive into ILS categories, there are two simple but crucial metrics you need to understand, runway visual range and decision altitude or height. Runway visual range, or RVR, tells us how far you can actually see down the runway. Think of it as your cockpit's visibility measure. It's the distance you can make out the runway markings. This is normally available in ATIS or in your usual aviation weather sources. If the visibility is high, however, it will normally not be listed as the visibility is so good that it is no longer a concern. Then there's decision altitude, DA, or decision height, DH. These are types of minima used for precision approaches, which an ILS approach is. This is the critical point during an approach where the pilot must either commit to landing or execute a missed approach. The terms are almost identical, but the difference is subtle. Decision altitude is referenced from sea level. Decision height is measured above the ground. This will become important later. Understanding these two metrics is key because they directly determine which ILS category you can safely fly. Now that we understand RVR and decision altitudes and heights, let's see how they connect to ILS categories. ILS categories come in three main flavors, Cat 1, Cat 2, and Cat 3. Think of it like a scale. The higher the number, the greater the accuracy of the ILS approach. Cat 3 is the most precise. Higher accuracy compensates for more challenging conditions, allowing pilots to land in lower runway visual ranges or to descend to lower decision heights. We'll start off with the most limiting of the ILS categories, Cat 1. A Cat 1 approach needs a minimum runway visual range of 550 meters, so you must ensure that the airport reports an RVR at or greater than 550 meters to keep it legal. While there is no law enforcement for your flight simming, it's always fun to keep it realistic. Cat 1 approaches also have a decision height of 200 feet. That means that once you reach 200 feet above the ground, you need to see the runway or go around. Cat 1 approaches are usually flown manually, so pilots disconnect the autopilot before minimums. Unlike with Cat 1, Cat 2 has a minimum RVR specification of 300 meters and generally has a decision height of 100 feet. Cat 2 landings are normally flown as auto lands but can be landed manually depending on airline procedures. Cat 2 operations are also subject to additional certifications but we'll get to that later. Finally, the most precise of all ILS categories is Cat 3. Cat 3 approaches are pretty much always flown as auto lands they require exceptional training and need well-equipped airports and aircraft which we'll cover soon. However, it doesn't end here. Cat 3 ILS approaches have a further three subcategories. Cat 3 A, B and C. These are the types of approaches that you would use in I literally can't see anything weather. Cat 3 A has an RVR of 200 meters and a decision height of less than 100 up to 50 feet. Cat 3 B has an RVR of up to 50 meters and a decision height of 50 feet all the way up to no decision height at all. Cat 3 C also exists with no limits whatsoever, but this isn't relevant information as I'll explain soon. For any ILS approach category, there are three factors determining whether you can fly them. They are the reported runway visual range, which we've already covered, the availability of ILS equipment at an airport, and the certification of the aircraft and the pilot. Let's take a deeper look at the airport equipment side of things. By the way, if you're new, welcome to Flight Deck Focus. I am a student glider pilot and prospective commercial pilot who loves to explore the systems behind flight. Alright, at its core, an ILS is two radio signals. The localizer which keeps you lined up left and right, and the glide slope which guides your descent. For an airport to offer different ILS categories, these signals must meet strict accuracy standards. But these systems are expensive. Some airports can only justify Cat 1, and a smaller airport may not even have an ILS at all, instead opting for non-precision approaches, but that's for a future video. This explains why your favorite tiny regional airport doesn't offer Cat 3. The airport also needs to have specialized lighting for low visibility operations to ensure that pilots can gain visual contact with the runway even in really difficult conditions to avoid missed approaches. Airports also need specialized ground radar and monitoring systems to ensure the safety of aircraft on the approach. They also need frequent and robust testing and calibration to ensure accuracy. 
Airports with advanced ILS systems also need to enact special operations to assure that the systems remain accurate. In the real world, or on that sim, the ATIS may let you know that low visibility operations are in force. This means that special rules are being followed due to low visibility. When that happens, the rules for taxiing, takeoff, and landing all change. For example, aircraft may have to stop at earlier holding points further from the runway to not interfere with auto lands and the INS signals. And the separation between aircraft is increased on the ground and on the approach to reduce the risk of collisions. The specifics of an airport's low visibility operations can be found in the airport briefing documents in your Navigraph charts. Even if the aircraft and pilot are certified, you still cannot fly CAT-2 or CAT-3 unless the airport has activated low visibility procedures and the equipment is operational. To check whether an airport supports certain categories, just look at the approach charts. If you see CAT-1, CAT-2, CAT-3 charts, those categories are available. If you only see plain ILS charts, it's probably only CAT-1 equipped. Doing this before departure saves you from discovering mid-flight that your destination can't handle the conditions and affects your planning. As a side note, you will not see CAT-3C approaches ever listed on charts. As though it is theoretically possible to land in zero visibility, you would still need to see to taxi, so it is never used in practice. Now let's look at the aircraft and pilot side. Not every pilot can fly a CAT-2 or 3 ILS. They need special training and certifications to handle low visibility approaches. Of course, there aren't any license requirements in the sim, so go and shoot a CAT-3 ILS if you'd like. Aircraft also need certifications for CAT-2 and 3 automan procedures. This entails high accuracy autopilot systems, radio altimeters which will become important soon, and strict monitoring equipment. Some aircraft might be capable in theory, but without proper certification, it all goes out the window. Again, this video is for flight sims, so there is nothing stopping you from flying a CAT-3 ILS in a blimp. All I say is good luck. Radio altimeters are crucial for CAT-2 or 3 approaches, as they are responsible for calculating the actual height over the ground using radio signals. 50, 40, 30, 20, retard, retard. On a CAT-1 ILS, the larger decision altitude number minima is used as it doesn't have to be as accurate. But on a CAT-2 or 3 ILS, the decision height is used as it is more accurate and is directly linked to the ground. We now know all the variables of ILS categories for our flights and adventures, so which one should you fly and when? The first factor when considering an ILS approach category is the conditions. If it is a bright sunny day, go for CAT-1. CAT-1 keeps things simple, less automation and more flying. If the conditions are pretty bad and the RVR is reported lower than 550 meters, you'll then need to consider a CAT-2 or even a CAT-3 approach if the RVR goes lower than 300 meters. Then you need to consider whether you and your aircraft are capable of a CAT-2 or 3 approach. Do you have all the necessary equipment? Do you know how to fly an ILS, which you can learn in the video linked above? Go watch it after this one. And lastly, does the airport have the necessary equipment? And are low visibility operations in place to allow you to take advantage of those systems? As mentioned before, just check your charts. If any of these variables fall through, you may find yourself limited to a lower approach category, or stuck holding, or even diverting to an alternate airport. Alright, let's wrap all of this up with a quickfire summary. There are three categories. Cat 1 is the least accurate and is normally flown manually. Cat 3 is the most accurate, always auto-handed and has the lowest limits. There are three factors determining which approach you can fly. The weather and conditions, specifically the RVR, the approaches, equipment and procedures, your own skill and the aircraft capability. If those three don't line up, fly a lower category, hold or divert. When landing, your go-no-go -no -go decision hinges on whether you can see the runway at your minimum. You cannot land if you do not see the runway. Please consider subscribing and thanks for watching. This is Flight Deck Focus, that was ILS Categories and I'll see you in the next one.